Und ich darf als, erste, als ersten Redner den Kollegen von Overtfeld an das Redepult bitten, der Chair des Budget Committee, wenn er denn da ist. So, jetzt ist es auch leise genug. Jetzt sage ich es noch mal. Erster Redner ist der Kollege Overt van Overtfeld, Chair des Budget Committees. We need the micro, please. Oh. Voorzitter, commissaris, collega's. Uh, de uitkomst van de conciliatie over het budget 23 heeft een aantal eroriënteringen en besparingen en ook een aantal belangrijke en noodzakelijke versterkingen opgeleverd. Zo werden er extra middelen vrijgemaakt voor steun aan de Oekraïnse samenleving, 290 miljoen in totaal via diverse programma's. Iedereen zal het erover eens zijn dat de Oekraïnse samenleving en haar burgers die steun brood nodig hebben. We mogen verwachten dat andere mondiale actoren zoals de VS dit voorbeeld zullen volgen. Naast de noodzakelijke en voor de hand liggende acute uitgaven investeren we via het budget 23 ook verder in domeinen waarin de EU wel degelijk een verschil kan maken. Dat zijn stappen in de goede richting, maar ze zijn naar mijn smaak te klein en niet ambitieus genoeg. De Europese Unie hangt budgettair nog te veel vast aan beleidsopties uit het verleden die een grote hypotheek leggen op de toekomst. We mogen ons daar niet door laten afremmen. Ik zou graag een budget zien dat nog meer vooruit kijkt, dat nog meer focust in plaats van te versnipperen en dat de ambitie uitstraalt om van Europa een koploper te maken op vlak van onderzoek, ontwikkeling en innovatie. Dringend en noodzakelijk is ook de ertekening van onze aanbodketens met als doel strategisch minder afhankelijk te zijn van regimes die onze waarden en normen afwijzen. Als u het gevoel hebt dat ik nu vooral China voor ogen heb, dan hebt u goed geconcludeerd. De geopolitieke context toont ons op diverse fronten dat een dergelijke ertekening noodzakelijk is. Het meerjarig financieel kader zoals het nu bestaat botst ook op zijn limieten. Het instrument is in zijn huidige vorm niet meer geschikt om antwoorden te kunnen bieden op grote uitdagingen de grote uitdagingen van vandaag en morgen. Symptomatisch hiervoor is het feit dat er telkens oplossingen en vehikels buiten de begroting op poten moeten gezet worden. Het wijst erop dat het meerjarenkader niet meer geschikt is om alles op de correcte manier te absorberen. Maar minstens even problematisch is het feit dat de controle op de uitgaven aanzienlijk uitgehold wordt. Op de grote uitgavenposten die zich buiten de reguliere begroting bevinden, zoals bijvoorbeeld het Corona-herstelfonds, het RRF, kan dit parlement zijn controlende taak, controlerende taak niet naar behoren uitoefenen. Het parlement wordt wel geacht om in te stemmen met de oprichting van dergelijke mechanismen, maar heeft achteraf het raden naar de concrete invulling en besteding van die middelen. Het is mijn taak als voorzitter van de begrotingscommissie om hierop te, te wijzen en te blijven wijzen. Dank u. Onze volgende spreker is de berichterstatter Stefan Utter Nicolai. Domnule președinte, domnule comisar Han, doamnă ministru Beck, chiar acum o mamă aprinde cuptorul pentru a găti copiilor singura dată pe săptămâna asta ca să nu consume gaz, care a devenit atât de scump. Chiar acum, un student din Sibiu renunță la planul de a studia în Franța pentru că 500 de euro nu mai sunt de mult, 500 de euro, ci 420 din cauza inflației, iar chiriile au crescut enorm. Chiar acum, extremiștii se pregătesc să dea foc Uniunii, iar dacă noi nu răspundem în 2023 Acestor crize în 2024 ne va fi mult prea târziu. Am luptat împreună cu cei care au fost raportori din umbră aici și împreună cu care am fost o echipă să obținem mai mult pentru Europa și pentru europeni. Și am obținut cu un miliard de euro mai mult. 
pentru trei direcții care corespund ce, uh, direcțiilor pe care ni le-au cerut oamenii. Și acestea sunt energie și facturi mai mici. Am obținut 80 de milioane în plus pentru Orizont Europa, 100 de milioane în plus pentru facilitarea conectarea Europei, care finanțează rețele de energie și transport, 30 de milioane în plus pentru programul LIFE, care nu este numai despre mediu, este și despre energie. Doi, am luptat ca să atenuăm efectele războiului. Am obținut 120 de milioane de euro pentru Erasmus, pentru, cei, pentru studenții care suferă în Europa, 50 de milioane în plus pentru fondul de azil și din acești bani dorim să vedem bani care merg și pentru Schengen, încât să nu mai avem scuze în ziua de 8 decembrie și să lăsăm România, Bulgaria și Croația să intre, pentru că avem toate dotările necesare. Am obținut 210 milioane de euro pentru Ucraina și pentru Moldova, pentru că acești oameni suferă nu doar de război, suferă și de ger. Și în final, și este important pentru Uniunea Europeană, pentru integrarea noastră, am obținut bani în plus, peste 60 de milioane de euro, pentru mobilitatea militară, pentru că este important să fim împreună în fața crizelor mondiale. Să nu uităm un lucru, societatea europeană e importantă. Churchill a spus, dacă tăiem banii de la cultură în timpul războiului, pentru ce mai luptăm? Exact așa, am luptat ca uh, oamenii din, din cultură să, să fie ajutați, am luptat pentru protecția civilă europeană, am luptat pentru sănătatea europeană care tocmai s-a născut și nu în ultimul rând am luptat pentru parchetul european al condus de Laura Codruța Căvești și să asigurăm transparența și dreptatea utilizării banilor europeni. Domnilor și doamnelor, Parlamentul European a luptat în aceste negocieri și răspunde astăzi cu un buget solid de 186 de miliarde de euro. Este un buget foarte important, dar avem o problemă, domnule comisar, avem o problemă dacă noi dăm mai mulți bani pentru politicele de acasă, iar de acasă ni se răspunde că nu pot implementa, că nu aduc banii acasă. Degeaba ne lăudăm, degeaba spun eu, Ștefănuță, domnul Han, doamna Bec, că noi sprijinim politicile acestea importante dacă statele membre nu reușesc și dacă oamenii nu văd rezultatul muncii mele. Eu cred, domnule președinte, că este o zi bună pentru Europa astăzi. Arătăm unitate, arătăm determinare, dar hai să vedem, să aducem Europa în casele oamenilor. Vă mulțumesc! Herzlichen Dank und zur nächsten Sprecher ist der Berichterstatter Herbst Niklas. Der Floor ist yours. Herr Präsident, meine sehr verehrten Damen und Herren, das ist vollbracht. Wir haben ein Ergebnis in unseren Haushaltsverhandlungen und das an sich ist schon mal sehr wichtig, denn ich glaube, es wäre sehr schwer zu vermitteln gewesen, dass wir in diesen schwierigen Zeiten uns über ja, vergleichsweise kleinteilige Themen streiten und es nicht schaffen, einen Haushalt zusammenzubringen. Trotzdem bleiben auch einige grundlegende Probleme. Und ich glaube, das Grundlegendste ist, dass wir noch stärker daran arbeiten müssen, auch ins Verständnis aller zu bringen, dass die Europäische Union keine reine Geldverteilungsmaschine sein kann. Es geht darum, dass wir klare Prioritäten setzen, dass wir politische Prioritäten setzen. Und ich glaube, dass uns das, und meine beiden Vorredner haben uns darauf hingewiesen, ganz gut gelungen ist als Parlament. Ich möchte mich auch ganz herzlich bedanken, dass wir es geschafft haben, auch über Parteigrenzen hinweg, trotz ja auch unterschiedlicher politischer Sichtweisen auf Prioritäten, es geschafft haben, uns zu einigen und zumindest einige dieser Prioritäten auch haushaltstechnisch verankern zu können. Für die Zukunft müssen wir lernen, dass wir eben auch mit diesen Prioritäten die Zukunft determinieren. Wir reden über vergleichsweise kleine Beträge und wenn man den Gesamthaushalt sieht und den engen Rahmen, den uns der mehrjährige Finanzrahmen bietet, kann man vielleicht an der einen oder anderen Stelle denken, naja, das sind nur kleinere Beträge, aber es geht eben auch darum, für die Zukunft ganz klare Prioritäten zu setzen und es sind auch kleinere symbolische Beträge manchmal sehr, sehr wichtig. Wir haben im Heading 7 gesehen, dass die Situation insgesamt sehr schwierig ist. Wir haben als Parlament von Anfang an darauf hingearbeitet, auch hier eine klare Linie zu zeigen. Wir haben gegen unser eigenen Präsidium es auch geschafft, Kürzungen durchzusetzen. Wir haben auf gesetzliche Bestimmungen hingewiesen, 
auf die Energiespar, auf die Energiesituation. Wir haben einfach eine schwierige Situation auch in diesem Heading. Aber gerade hier müssen wir auch für die Zukunft lernen. Ich bin sehr froh, dass wir einen klaren Schwerpunkt setzen konnten mit dem Thema Cybersecurity, dass wir es geschafft haben, hier eine echte Verstärkung durchzusetzen und dass wir uns auch ganz klar dazu ähm, committed haben und geeinigt haben, dass wir auch stark zusammenarbeiten wollen in der Zukunft. Das ist etwas, was wir hier auch an dieser Stelle ja oft genug betont haben. Das zeigt eben, dass wir die Herausforderungen der Zukunft auch im Haushalt sehen können müssen. Und wir sagen auch als Parlament, dass wir unserer Rolle gerecht werden wollen als Anwalt der anderen Institutionen. Denn Europa funktioniert nur dann, wenn alle Institutionen gut arbeiten können und wenn sie auch ähm, finanziell und materiell und auch personell so ausgestattet sind, dass sie ihr Mandat erfüllen können. Und das gilt auch für uns als Parlament. Wohl wissend, dass wir hier auch ähm, einer schwierigen Situation bevorstehen, denn die Situation im Heading 7 wird ja nicht einfacher im nächsten Jahr. Wir haben es diesmal ja auch nur relativ knapp geschafft, unter dem Flexibilitätsinstrument zu bleiben. Wir werden auch als Parlament daran arbeiten müssen, dass wir in Zukunft ebenfalls diese Latte nicht reißen. Und deshalb sind wir auch in Zukunft darauf angewiesen, gut zusammenzuarbeiten. Ich bedanke mich bei den Shadow Schattenberichterstattern, ich bedanke mich auch bei der Ratspräsidentschaft und auch bei der Kommission, die hier ihre Rolle als Hüterin der Verträge und ehrliche Makler gerecht geworden ist. Wir haben gerade 70 Jahre Europaparlament gefeiert. Ich denke, dass wir unserer Verantwortung auch als Hausgesetzgeber in Zukunft ähm, gerecht werden. Wir werden unsere Rolle auch selbstbewusst verteidigen. Auch das lernen wir nach 70 Jahren Europaparlament. Vielen Dank für die Aufmerksamkeit. Thank you very much, dear colleague. Our next speaker is the representative of the Council, Minister Beck. President, Honourable Members, Commissioner Hahn, ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to attend today the European Parliament's debate on the general budget of the European Union for the financial year 2023. I would like to express the Council's satisfaction that we were able to reach an agreement in the Conciliation Committee in the very last minutes of the 14th of November, the last day of the conciliation period after long and intense discussions. The positive outcome of the negotiations shows that our three institutions can work efficiently in a spirit of good cooperation. Together, we negotiated a budget for 2023, which responds to the concerns of today and to the requirements of tomorrow of European citizens. The European Parliament and the Council have worked hard to find a solution that would equip the Union for the challenges of the third year of the multi-annual financial framework. The deal we have reached reflects our common priorities, in particular addressing the consequences of the war in Ukraine, the severe energy crisis combined with the historically high level of inflation, the disruption of global supply lines and the enduring post-pandemic recovery, and in addition to fighting climate change and fostering the EU's green and digital transition. I will not hide from you that the Council would have preferred more flexibility in the budget to allow the Union to promptly react to unexpected events that we may face in these unpredictable times. In the official meetings in the course of the year, as well as during informal contacts, the Council appreciated very much the positive atmosphere that prevailed in these talks. Both sides of the table were ready to engage constructively to reach an agreement to reframe the discussion around the shared interests and come up with solutions. I am glad to inform you that after the successful outcome of the Conciliation Committee on the 14th of November, the joint text was formally approved by the Council earlier today by qualified majority. The Council expects the European Parliament to also approve the joint text tomorrow. The general budget for the financial year 2023 will then be adopted within the deadlines foreseen by the treaty. Coming to the end of my intervention, I would like to thank the Chairman of the European Parliament's Committee on Budgets, Johann van Overfeld, and the rapporteurs, Nicolae Stefanuzza and Niklas Herbst, for the good cooperation during the last weeks and months. I would also like to extend my special thanks to you, Commissioner Hahn, for the way you facilitated the negotiations. Presidents, President, Honourable Members, Commissioner, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much. Ich darf nun um die Ausführungen den zuständigen Kommissar, Herrn Johannes Hahn, um das Rednerpult, zum Rednerpult bitten. 
Vielen Dank, Herr Vorsitzender. Dear Minister, Honorable Members, uh, in particular, dear Rapporteurs, of course, I welcome the agreement on the European Union Annual Budget 2023 reached by the Conciliation Committee on Monday, the 14th of November, as usual, uh, just before midnight. Uh, this is not really unexpected, uh, but let me also say for the protocol, I very much welcome the fact that we have this debate, this debate on a very prominent time, but I have to say it's for the second time in a row that I miss a college meeting because nowadays the parliament is uh, debating uh, at the time when the college meeting takes place and I think uh, it's something I would really like to reconsider for the future. Anyway, uh, I think the fact that we got an agreement is uh, our shared success. It was already expressed by the previous speakers. In such unprecedented times, it was more than ever important to put aside our differences and work together on reaching our shared goals and priorities. The initial positions uh, were, like always, uh, quite far apart, um, a couple of uh, billion euros, but um, finally it was possible to reconcile them, but I appreciate that all parties acted responsible and made the necessary compromises in order to have finally a solid agreement on time. I would like to thank the European Parliament, especially the Committee on Budget and all specialized committees for the intensive work on the Commission's proposal for the draft budget 2023. This is a half-year work which starts usually in early July. On behalf of the Commission, I really would like to thank in particular the Chair Van Overfeld and the two rapporteurs, Mr. Stefanutter and Mr. Herbst, for their cooperation. And I would also like to thank the Czech Presidency and please uh, uh, convey uh, the thanks to Mr. Minister Georgiev uh, for his constructive approach during these uh, negotiations. It also shows that the institutions can work towards a compromise for the benefit of the European Union and its citizens. For this, again, congratulations to the negotiators and their teams. I would also like to include in this my own team because they have done a great job. And uh, Johan Urel, who is to today with me, uh, it will be, or it was, his final budget. Um, he was uh, our Mr. Budget. He made seven annual budget, and before he was 14 years in charge of the MFF. So, Johan, thank you very much for your impressive job. Uh, let me now give you a few uh, details on the agreement. The overall level of commitment appropriations in the next year's budget is set at 186.6 billion euro. The overall level of payment appropriations in the 2023 budget is set at 168.7 billion euro. The rapporteurs already explained the reinforcements for the Parliament's priorities with emphasis on Ukraine, Moldova, tackling the energy crisis, building solidarity lanes, strengthening Erasmus Plus, Life, SMEs, EU for Health, Creative Europe, rights and values programs, as well as the European Solidarity Corps, reinforcing migration funds, providing funds for military mobility, supporting the eastern and southern neighborhood via the Ndiki Global Euro Program, and strengthening the asylum agency and EU LISA, just to list uh, a few agreed reinforcements. But the old annual budget also includes uh, a package of 39 pilot projects and preparatory actions for a total amount of 80.1 million euro as proposed by the Parliament. Once adopted, the annual budget 2023 would allow the Union to mobilize significant funds to help mitigate the severe consequences of Russia's war of aggression against Ukraine, not only in the country, but also in the member states and in the neighborhood. It would also support the ongoing sustainable recovery from the coronavirus pandemic by maintaining and creating jobs. It would trigger further investments into a greener, more digital and more resilient Europe, while protecting the most vulnerable in the European Union, its neighborhood and around the world. Next year's budget will direct funds to where they can make the greatest difference in line with the most crucial needs of the member states and the union partners 
around the world. Looking forward, let me recall that we are almost halfway through the long-term budget. With the numerous unprecedented uh, developments and challenges, is ha it has become even more clear that we should focus on a limited number of important issues to maximize the effectiveness of our funding with targeted reinforcements concentrated on a limited number of issues with a real impact. Uh, in that respect, I would like to thank the rapporteurs again because there was some progress compared to, pre to the previous budget, but I think even more focusing and uh, uh, targeted uh, reinforcements could be possible. So I also reiterate my strong plea for all institutions to exercise restraint in their administrative expenditure and keep stable staff numbers in order not to increase the heavy pressure on Heading 7. The reality is that we cannot continue adding new posts for institutions and respect the ceiling and sub-ceilings in Heading 7. Going forward, we will have uh, to face some tough choices between what we would like to do and what we can do. Keyword, negative priorities. I can assure you that the Commission will focus its future proposal, including the upcoming draft budget 2024, on the most effective and efficient use of our limited resources to deliver on our citizens' expectations and needs. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Hahn. Nun kommen wir zu den Sprechern der